Welcome back to TFT Central. Today we're going to be taking you through the best settings for the Samsung Odyssey G80 SD. This is a particularly complicated monitor thanks to its smart TV features and all of its software. So hopefully this guide will help you get this set up properly for both STR and HDR usage. We've restored the screen to its factory settings. So the first thing we're going to need to do is actually use the joystick controller on the back of the screen. Open up the menu, go to settings, and we need to come down to game and turn the game mode on. You'll get a warning about power consumption, which seems to happen quite a lot on this monitor. Once you've switched over to the game mode, you can now set your graphics card at 240 hertz. We found that ours was locked at 120 hertz if you don't have game mode enabled. So that's definitely the first thing you want to do. And now you'll be able to use the remote control, which will also make this video a lot easier to record. So with the remote control, you can bring up this quick launch bar down the bottom of the screen by holding the play pause button. And this is where you would get to the full settings for the screen. We're going to do a couple of things here. So we're going to actually set up two different preset modes here on the left, two different game genre modes, one for SDR and one for HDR. And we're going to use the two custom modes for this. So we're going to use custom one for SDR and then custom two for HDR in a minute. So custom one, first of all, we've selected that. And then we're going to come back into the more settings menu. Most of the settings that you want to change will be in the picture menu. So let's go there first picture. We'll just check the eye care settings. These should be turned off. That's fine. Expert settings. So this is where we're going to want to make the most changes. So for SDR mode, we're going to lower the brightness to 16 for 120 nits, or if you want it a bit higher, you can set this at 23 for 150 nits or 36 for around 200 nits. We're going to go with 16 there. Contrast, you can leave on 50. Sharpness at 10. Color, we're actually going to bump this down to 25. That is the default actually in the other modes. This custom mode, for some reason, defaults to 30. We're going to just turn that back down. Tint, you can leave it zero. Contrast enhancer, we're going to turn that off. Color tone, we're going to set this to warm one. And then we're going to come into white balance and we're going to press the two point adjustment and we're going to change these levels to plus five for red gain. And then we'll leave green gain and blue gain on zero and the offsets can also be left on zero. So that's the finished result, basically plus five for the red channel. That combined with the warm one color tone should return you a white point very close to 6,500 Kelvin. Gamma, you can leave at 2.2. Shadow detail. Now this will vary a little bit by screen. What you might want to do in SDR mode is check out some grayscale patterns and just see if you can detect the near black shades properly. If not, you might want to play around with this we found that bumping this up to a setting of around three seemed to help bring out some of the shadow detail a little bit more. Do experiment though, because that could vary by sample. And obviously you don't want to do it to the extent where black start to look not black anymore. So we found a setting of three to be fine for SDR. Color space settings. So you've got two choices here really. You can either stick with the native color space mode, which will use the full wide gamma of the screen if you don't mind the more saturated and vivid looking colors of the wide gamut mode, then you can stick to native, that's fine. It won't be as accurate for SDR and sRGB content though. One thing you might wanna try if you're going to use that mode is to check out our calibrated ICC profile. That's linked in the description below if you want to check that out. The other option for SDR is to change to the auto mode. Now you'll see the colors do go more dull initially because it's switching to the sRGB emulation mode, but that will give you a more accurate performance for SDR content, sRGB content, if that's what you're after. So you can choose between the native and the auto mode, depending on your preference. We'll just leave it on the native mode for now. Peak brightness, that's off and that's locked anyway. The VRR control does seem to help reduce flicker in VRR situations, but it does come at the cost of some increased input lag and some stuttering. We talk about that more in our review that's linked below as well. So if you want to know more, check that out. But if you find you've got particular problems with VRR flickering in games, then you could turn this on here if you want to. In the game menu, you can turn adapter sync on or off. If you are gaming from a device that supports HDR10 plus gaming, 
you can enable that here and switch to the basic or the advanced modes. Or if you're connecting a device that supports HGIG, like maybe a games console, you can enable that here as well. We'll also come into the general and privacy menu and just check that the power and energy saving settings are correct. You can turn on the brightness optimization function that will activate the ambient light sensor. That might be useful to some people, particularly if you're wanting to use the screen in loads of different lighting conditions. We'll personally leave that off for now. The rest of the settings seem to be fine at the moment. In the panel care menu, you can turn the adjust logo brightness setting off, low or high. We recommend leaving this on if possible to help with image retention mitigation. If you do find it problematic or if it causes you any kind of unexpected dimming behavior, you can turn that off in the menu here if you want. Now we're gonna set the screen up for HDR mode. So we've enabled HDR from Windows. We'd recommend only enabling HDR when you're actually going to view HDR content. There are reasons for that and that's all explained in our article linked below. You'll see that we're still by default in the custom one mode. Now we're gonna set up a separate preset mode for HDR. So we're gonna use custom two for that. The reason for that is that otherwise a lot of the settings carry through into HDR mode and you don't want to keep having to change things within the preset and certain things like the color space if you've selected auto for sRGB and that's going to carry through to HDR which we don't want. So we'll use custom 2 and then in the main menu we're going to come back and we're going to come to the picture mode menu then in the expert settings we're going to turn brightness up to the maximum 50. This is another reason to use a separate preset mode for HDR, otherwise it keeps the same brightness setting that you had in SDR. Contrast 50, that's fine. Sharpness 10, color, we're again going to turn down to 25, which is a default, the middle setting, tint at zero. Contrast enhancer, we're going to turn that off. HDR tone mapping, now there are two choices here, active and static. We prefer the static mode that gives you a more accurate HDR performance with better EOTF tracking. But if you don't mind a less accurate setup and you want a brighter looking image, then the active mode might be worth experimenting with as well. We're going to leave that set for static for now. Color tone, we are going to set this to natural for HDR. And then we're going to come into the white balance, two point adjustment, and we're going to change these to red minus two green minus one and blue plus three. So there's the finished result. That will give you again a white point very close to 6,500 Kelvin or D65. Gamma, you can leave at ST2084, no need to adjust that. The shadow detail setting, this is going to be a little bit more tricky for you to test because you need an HDR grayscale test pattern. We found that turning this up a couple of settings help bring out some of that near black detail. Do experiment with that, see what you think in your content. Color space settings, we're going to leave this on native for HDR, that's the full wide gamut of the panel. Now this is an important setting for peak brightness. We're going to want to turn that up either to medium or high. You're going to need to experiment with this to see which you prefer for your content. We expect most people might prefer the high setting for the highest peak brightness for smaller APLs, but the medium setting can look brighter in some scenes as well. So have an experiment with that. If you find that that high mode is a bit too dark in some situations, you might wanna come back and try the active tone mapping option as well. That will certainly give you a brightness boost. So that's it, that's the screen set up for both SDR and HDR usage. If you've got any questions, please let us know in the comments section below. And don't forget to hit subscribe to stay up to date on all future monitor reviews, content, and other videos. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you next time.